Thanks for having me again. It's great to be back. I had some really good feedback last year about the fact that my presentation was not so technical. Because let's face it, I'm not the best technical person, so <laughs> it's what works for me, but it seems that it works for some other people as well. So I thought I would roll with something a little less technical again this year. And it's a solution we came up with for lone iPads that um, basically can be administered by anyone irrespective of their technical abilities. Um, it's an example of how a bit of MDM magic and a new approach can help you to appease your drama llamas. So as Marcus said, I work for North Tech. We're at the top of New Zealand. We have a distributed user base across five campuses and around about 60 community delivery sites. We've been managing Apple devices since 2011 and approximately 50% of our devices are iPads, 25% Apple TVs, and 25% Mac. Our users range from first-time tablet users to digital natives. Two-thirds of them are one-to-one -one users, and one-third of our devices are shared-use iPads. Prior to 2017, we went through the process of culling off Excuse me. all of our non-DEP compatible iPads, there were quite a few from the early days, we began to review how we were using iPads as well as part of our continuous improvement process. And we started that process by looking at the feedback from our users of managed iPads. So what did our users think? Here's a tutor using a one-to-one -one iPad. I wonder what she's got to say. I'm a happy tutor. I love my iPad. Sweet. So she's a happy tutor and she loves her iPad. That's awesome. It's what I love to hear. Here we have a student. She's lucky enough to have an iPad to use for the entire year, one to one. I wonder how her experience is going. I'm a happy student. I love my iPad. Cool. A happy student loves her iPad. Sounds like we're doing a great job at this. We may as well just pack up and go home now. Oh, hang on. <laughs> There's that drama llama guy. He's got something to say about his lone iPad cart. Oh dear. I'm a sad drama llama. Uh, we have an iPad cart in our department and um, yeah, they're meant to work for us, but they never do. Uh, they always need updates, or they're not charged because no one had plugged them in, and everyone tells me that's my job, but I just don't have time for this. Um, I just don't want to deal with this anymore. Oh dear. Well, it sounds like he's been burned by a bad experience. Maybe we should take a look at how we're using our lone iPads. So we had our iPads running in carts, the traditional way. They were out in the program areas, squirreled away in, in an office somewhere and used by the tutors in that department. Um, we had them managed for automated resets. Now, just bear in mind that this was prior to Configurator 2.5. So with Configurator 2, we didn't have nearly the same tool set available to actually automate the management, and it was prone to breaking on updates. Um, so that kind of inadvertently caused that bad experience for our Drama Llama guy. Um, it wasn't long because he was referring to them as a cow and, and likened it to the pain of using computers on wheels. So we, um, we'd created that bad user perception and there really wasn't any coming back from that. Uh, the only answers I could think of were either replace our users or um, look at a new way of facilitating lone iPads. And unfortunately I was told replacing the users wasn't an option. 
The other kicker about the iPad carts for Jamf management was that they had no Wi-Fi connectivity within this big metal box. Whoever designed those things, really guys, honestly. Um, so, we went to our magical MDM unicorns and asked if they could help us out. Hi, I'm a magical MDM unicorn. I can make your life better with Apple Shared iPads. Cool, Apple Shared iPads. I like the sound of that. Let's check it out. Well, we're already set up for Apple School Manager, so tick. Um, the students can sign in and out. It mirrors our lone laptop process. My manager is going to love this. Um, we don't have to erase the devices. Sweet, no work for me. I like this. And the tutors will still have to do a little bit of work assigning students to iPads, but hey, if everything else pans out, it could be worth it. Hang on, what have our magical MDM unicorns got to say now? Um, guys, the logins don't work. Well, it's not our fault they're using Radius Network Authentication. Just tell them to plug into Ethernet or something. Hey, um, guys, it doesn't work with their student management system. They're using Artina. Well, why aren't they using one of the ones that we like to use? They're just making things hard for themselves. Okay, well, um, why don't we, we let them have a go with it and see what they think? Hi, oh, that doesn't sound good. So, we did give it a go. Um, we did a little bit of testing and realised there was just no way that we could make the Apple School Manager shared iPads work for us in our environment in a way that was going to really be tenable. Um, the users were unable to log in on the iPad until the Radius certificate had applied and the certificate couldn't apply without a network connection. So yes, plugging into Ethernet did work, but are we going to have 60 students lined up on the way into a lecture plugging into Ethernet and signing in? I don't think so. Um, it was not compatible with Artina, so we'd have to pipe it out to a CSV and back in, which was just going to be a pain. Um, and no single sign-on ability was a bit of a bummer as well. We didn't want an additional password management overhead placed on us. And the other thing that we did find was during peak network usage, the backup of the data to our cache servers was a little bit flaky. So, we went back to our users and we asked them what they really wanted out of lone iPads. Well... I want to be able to get the iPads, have them charged right up, ready to go, um, not have to muck around connecting them to the Wi-Fi, and um, it shouldn't really take us more than two minutes of our class time to get up and running with them. Otherwise, it's just eating into our teaching time and the students aren't going to benefit from that. Once our class is done with them, I just want to give them back and go and get on with the next thing I have to do. I don't really want to have to worry about iPads outside of my class time. Okay, so our Drama Llama guy just wants to have some reliable iPads that are ready to go, that aren't going to create extra work for him. It's not really that unreasonable if you think about it. Wonder what our happy tutor has to say. Maybe she wants to share some iPad love with her students. I'd love it if my students could use iPads too. Think of how much fun my classes would be. I'm not going to have to, like, do anything with the iPads, though, like sign people in and work out how to get them running and charge them and stuff, though, right? It might make it a bit too much of a hassle. 
Okay, so it sounds like all of our staff are actually on the same page. They all just want iPads that are ready to go, quick and easy to get into, and they don't have to worry about making sure everything's charged for the next class. That's, you know, maybe something we can do, but I wonder who's actually going to help us out with charging them. Uh-oh, it's one of those management guys. I wonder what he's got to say about it. We don't have the money to keep buying more iPads just so more students can use them. Why don't we look for a way that we can get a better return on our investment and increase utilisation of our iPads? Okay. So, so far we've got no one wants to maintain them. Um, we have to use them more and we don't want to create extra work for ourselves. Um, but the only thing I can think of right about now is asking our help desk guys if they could help out. Yeah, we're happy to help out. Just please don't make it too much extra work for us. Cool. Thanks, help desk guy. That's much appreciated. So what's next? Sure. I'll just wave my magic wand and everyone will have what they want. Um, yeah, or maybe we could look at, look at sort of a workflow and solution utilising MDM instead. So we put on our thinking hats and we did centralise our loan fleet. Um, when we went out to all our program areas and said, would you be agreeable to doing this, they jumped at it. Um, so it showed us just how much they did want to use them but didn't want to manage them. Um, we configured the iPad sets so they were bookable in multiples of five. It caters for a small group activity right through to large lectures. We run the loans same day only, so statistically we've found that damage or loss of our devices goes through the roof as soon as they go out for more than a day. Um, so it's just a way of keeping accountability and minimising at the cost of actually doing it. And our main goal that we had by doing this was to repair the damage we'd done and fix that user perception that loan iPads were unreliable and hard to use. Now, there's probably 100 different ways that you could actually create a solution to this. This is just one not so technical way of doing it, um, using the tools that we happen to have available there are plenty of other ways to do this, but this one is ours. We use the Jamf MDM, Apple School Manager with DEP and VPP integration. Um, we had to find somewhere to physically put the iPads. We happen to have a spare storage cupboard that, fit, um, that does that for us. And enough power capacity in there to actually charge them. Um, if you're going to look at centralising a loan fleet, please don't forget that. And the other thing that we did do was um, add an Ethernet adapter into the mix for our help desk so that they're not reliant on Wi Fi for management of iPads as they come in and out. Um, they can just plug them in and, and let Jamf do everything. So, how do we do it? Well, we utilised our current equipment booking system. It happens to be SharePoint 2010, but um, you could utilise much better ones, I'm sure. We um, initiate the device wipes currently from Jamf, um, so our help desk users log in and do that. Um, but there are ways that you can automate that script and make it much cooler, and I'll talk about that a bit later. Um, our help desk team have helped us out with the slightly manual step of getting the iPad, plugging it in, tap, 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 wait a second, unplug it, onto the next one. And it, it literally is that fast to get them back up and running and um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Once the Wi-Fi profile is installed, the iPad goes back into its caddy where it gets charged and it's ready for the next user. Um, by handing the device over to the user with the Wi-Fi already configured and working, um, we've taken out that biggest issue or risk of, of causing an issue. They're ready to go, 
don't have to muck around signing in, don't have accounts locked out, etc. And we still can put the onus on users to connect the Wi-Fi and tap through setup if we have to. So if we were under the pump and couldn't turn them around fast enough, they're still able to do that and we know that it'll work. So to make this happen, there's a little bit of back-end configuration required. Um, most of the configuration I'm covering, like I said, can be scripted, and there are other sessions that have talked about that kind of thing um, in great detail, and those guys are far better at it than I could ever be. Um, so I would like to share a way that the less technical among us can still utilize MGM magic and um, automate all the things. Now, while I am um, making the process less technical, I do have a slight aversion to giving non-technical people the ability to nuke every device we have out of existence. So I have segregated them within Jamf by creating a new site for these loan devices. So if we had more than one loan site physically, I'd probably segregate those out as well into additional sites, but we're only running one at this point. And the other thing, the other thing that we're doing is um, separating departments. So we utilize the departments because when our devices enroll through DEP in the pre-stage enrollment, it scopes to the department and then everything just goes bam, bam, bam off that and it's reliable and fast. Um, and we know that our Wi-Fi profile will hit the device in seconds as it's enrolled. So the DEP program facilitates the enforced configuration of the devices as per our pre-stage enrolment. Um, and those sites, like I said, limit the blast radius and the department scopes each set of iPads for all the further management. We also have some smart groups configured. Um, those are used by our help desk to actually wipe the devices. So they view the group action um, and then remote command erase and they're done. And once again, that's scoped to the department. Um, so keep it clean, just scope everything to the department and it's always going to work reliably for you. The biggest complaint that we'd had about our loan iPads, and iPads in general actually, was getting connected to the Wi-Fi. Um, users would lock their account out because they're used to using an Android device and they'd get capitals wrong. And um, the other thing they'd do is freak out when they saw the certificate trust me um, message for our Radius server and um, hit cancel and then they're not connected. So we've mitigated that straight away. And they're up and running immediately. The iPad can be connected to Ethernet to complete that setup in literally a few seconds. And the tutors are accountable for the use of the devices while they've got them booked. So we're not concerned about who the actual individual with each iPad in their hand is. That's up to the tutor. And that Wi-Fi profile, once again, scope to department. Now, the app installations, we automate that using VPP. I'm not going to go into all the back-end VPP setup, um, but this is just us scoping it to our departments. And ensure that you set the app to automatically install because if you don't you will sit there and sit there and sit there and wonder why your apps haven't installed and I hate to admit it but I have done this many times. And so the end result is that we go from the welcome screen to an iPad that's installing apps and under management in just four taps and under 30 seconds um, and one of those taps is to enable location services. I wish that we could automate that. If anyone knows how to, please let me know. So, outcomes to date. We've created a reliable workflow which we can trust. It requires less resources and less skills to administer it and maintain it. 
more users have access to our iPads and the managers are happy because we didn't spend a cent doing it. In fact, our managers even got on board and started using them in their planning workshops um, and we've had some amazing feedback from them about it. And hang on, what's Drama Llama guy got to say? I'm a happy Drama Llama. I love lone iPads. Cool. Drama Llama guy loves lone iPads. Woohoo. Um, so like I said, it is scriptable. Um, this is about the limit of my scripting abilities. It's a basic bash command, but this will actually wipe an iPad. Um, and there are plenty of ways that you could take that and utilize it with an array or loops to, to um, wipe a group of iPads on return. Some further development ideas for it, utilizing webhooks. Um, how cool would it be to check it back in in your booking system for your equipment and it automatically wipes the device for you? Like, that's one step taken out right there. The device is already wiped. Um, and another idea which Paul Cowan had suggested to me was Bluetooth proximity for device wipes. Um, you could have a Bluetooth dongle with small proximity set on it and then just swipe the device over it like it was a library return system. Um, so there's some very cool ways that you could actually do this and um, as sad as I am that I don't have time, I just hope that someone else does actually do it because it's very cool. Um, and if, like me, you're not a scripting guru, um, check out Tony Williams' JSS tools. He's after some guinea pigs to help him with um, some iOS device, um, device testing and stuff, so, yeah. Um, oh, the other thing I'd like to do is thank these guys for pitching in to help with my presentation. And I would like to thank Peter Wells. Is he actually here? Yeah. Um, your 90 second lightning talk last year is how I learned to do the Final Cut stuff. And it was the first time I'd ever open Final Cut. But thank you. It was very cool. Um, and just if anyone's thinking about doing a lightning talk or even submitting for a presentation next, next year, seriously, go for it. It's um, such a cool environment to actually do this in. And Thank you.